Since the beginning of the war, 4 million Ukrainians have fled their cities. At the same time, many people stayed and decided to help the country as much as they could. They helped the army cook food, evacuate people under shelling and defend their country. Before the war, these people had careers and thriving businesses. But now they are all volunteers. So I cannot fight with a weapon in my hand. I can fight with the uh, humanitarian cause. That's what I can do. First thing first. During the war you need to cook a lot of food and not only for the army, but also for the territorial defense and people who just can't afford it. That's why many cozy restaurants and cafes in Ukraine have turned into food factories. My friend, uh, Ola, she's the owner of the cafe. And so basically we're staying and cooking for our army, people in need for uh, hospitals or something like that, just for anybody who needs food. This cafe with some kind of cardboard protection on the windows is now cooking food every day. And it's not just the cafe team that volunteers, but visitors too. I also visited a trendy cafe called Dublor in Kiev. This is how it looks right now. So this place used to be like a hipster cafe. Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> and, and this is right now, it's a volunteer center. Yes, yes, right, exactly. We have like um, more than 100 uh, people who are drivers. And also we have in our whole community about 500 people who work in our kitchens, package our food, who do drive, deliver and so on. And so they're working for free? Yeah, they all work for free. All these places spend their own money and the funds they get from donations, just to help others. Only in Kiev there are over 30 restaurants that collectively make 15,000 meals a day. Dasha Astafiva is one of such volunteers. Daria used to be a Playboy magazine playmate and have hung out with Hugh Hefner, which is why I had to blur some areas of this picture. She was also part of the band called Nikita. Now Daria peels potatoes in the kitchen in order to feed the defenders of Kiev. I thought, I really Daria considers herself a part of so-called potato troops. It's obviously a joke, but there is some truth to it. Today, nearly every citizen in Ukraine is working for the common good of the country. There are hundreds of self-organized volunteer centers where people come together to collect mats, clothes and other stuff. Some weld anti-tank hedging gogs, others learn how to make bulletproof vests. And this brings me to an all-important question of army supply. Meet Sergei Pritula. Sergei is one of the most renowned Ukrainian volunteers. As of 2014, his fund provides help for the Ukrainian army, and they managed to raise roughly 8 million dollars during only for the first three weeks of the war. His office now is a real hub. And I want to show you a small storage of this volunteer hub. It is a small piece of the puzzle on the global scale, but still. This is where they keep fuel, clothes, camouflage nets, optical and thermal vision devices. All in all, they try to source everything that Ukrainian army may need to defend the country, including trucks that are so needed by the troops. So with this truck, some guy with an anti-plane missile hit the Russian plane Su-34. And this is debris of that plane. This is what has remained from a 40 million dollar Russian fighter jet after it got hit by the Igla rocket. Another artifact. This is the piece of caliber Russian missile which hit like somewhere in suburbs of Kiev. And Sergei has a lot of such artifacts in his office. And now one more piece of technology that became like a game changer for this war. And this is the drones. Drones have become the key tool of modern warfare. Sergei is about to explain why. The, the main difference between uh, Ukrainian army and Russian army is that we care about every one soldier, about his life. But Russians, they have a military, military tradition. They call it разведка uh, боем. То есть, блядь, более тупого в современной войне, в современной армии найти невозможно. Но они это практикуют, разведку боем. То есть послать какое-то количество своих солдат для того, чтобы добыть разведывательные данные путем их гибели. 
У нас задача стоит совершенно другая. Это спасти каждого украинского солдата. Поэтому все технологические новинки, которые есть и которые этому способствуют, мы этим пользуемся. Actually, I don't know if DJI company ever thought that their drones would be used not only for the pictures shooting, but for the war intel. Drones are now essential for the army, and Ukrainian soldiers frequently use them to conduct reconnaissance and fire adjustment, and the military needs a lot of them. Sergei's found also source and acquire professional drones to scout deep into the enemy territories. This device has a range of more than 100 miles and costs around 300,000 euros per piece. But we raised uh, the money in uh, three hours and a half. Because Ukrainians are really amazing, uh, they share their money. It uh, doesn't matter where they live, in Ukraine, outside of Ukraine, in North America, in Europe. During this rising I had a few calls. One, our guy from United States of America, he called me and said that uh, I have money, I want to buy the same. But <laughs> uh, companies that produce, they said that we bought the last one. The next topic is the defense support. This is Alexander Kahanovsky. Before the war, he was an esports manager and a Counter Strike player. Now he is playing Counter Strike in real life as a part of Kyiv police. For the past 20 years I've been in esports industry and as far as I know esports whenever people are playing computer games professionally. So I started late 90s playing just in the gaming cafes in StarCraft and strategy games. Starting from early 2000 I switched to Counter-Strike. That's FPS first person shooter, well, the king of esports and one of the most popular games on the planet. I've played five years professionally participating in the World Cup event, then I quit. And then he found Navi, one of the most popular and successful esports team on the planet. In fact, this Ukrainian team is often considered to be the best in the world. Today Alexander managed a squad of 20 officers and 5 managers. They also do fundraising. You know, it's really surprising to see how these people with an IT background use Trello to manage their military tasks. To speak frankly, I'm using all my previous background, starting from a business background, like corporations management, to unfortunately uh, my Counter-Strike background, which I need in real life, yeah? All these kind of skills, reactions, tactical singing is helping me even here. A little bit, but still it's kind of every person count right now. Of course, we are into tactical training, medical training. We have uh, certain missions inside Kyiv and in, uh, outside of Kyiv, near Kyiv, uh, Kyiv region area. So currently uh, we are night patrol on the streets of Kyiv. During this night time our missions might include uh, just taking care of safety on the streets. Uh, we might be called to enhance police patrols all around the city as well as we are enhancing block posts sometimes whenever people need us. The Counter-Strike is, st is still very useful. I think first of all it's like how you can listen to commands and how you can command. Team play, for sure, it will be needed over here, reaction. So I think partially Counter-Strike, of course, like the Counter-Strike as, as a professional player, uh, I know the basics, so you, you know the basics, so like you can do like the commanders, the special forces unit, how they move and what are they doing, is pretty much the same as you are doing in Counter-Strike. So this is like was a good training, let's say it's, it's uh, uh, level 101 <laughs> for special forces, let's say like that. 100% we will have a special task like uh, which we will be assigned for and those things of course they will be like in a high risk in terms of like uh, to encounter with the enemy yeah so like the, it might be any kind of any kind of skirmish and this skirmish has really happened the guys from his battalion went to the recently liberated town of Repin to clean up and scout the territory whilst there they found several dugouts and suddenly came under mortar fire <laughs> wounded one of the team members and they've lost their car. So how can you help Ukraine? First of all, spread the word about what's going on here. That's really important. Everybody needs to know. Every person on the planet needs to know what's going on here. It's fucking war. Second, help financially. Uh, Ukraine econ economically right now is suffering a lot. The governments of the other countries are helping us not to collapse as a country but any penny counts. Send money whenever you find suitable 
and that's the best way how you can contribute. This is what Alexander Kostelev did, who is also known as Simple. He is considered to be one of the best Counter-Strike GO players in history and part of Navi team. When the war started, he was in Katowice preparing for his next tournament. Simple has donated 1.5 million hryvnias to support the Ukrainian army. And the smallest thing that I did and all of you can do is donate to our military forces who defend our country. And the biggest thing that all of us can do together is to tell the truth that Russia is doing these crime things, that it's not fake, that it's not Ukrainians attack Ukrainians, and most of the world doing the same. And the last topic I want to cover is evacuation. This is Anton Sinenka. Before the war, Anton was doing tunneling scanning microscopy at the university. During the war, together with his partner, Anton has saved about 100 people, evacuating them out of Erpin. They did it whilst the city was still occupied by the Russian troops. Мені здається, що для мене таким капітальним тригером стало те, коли я бачив розстріляні автівки з написом діти. This was an incredibly dangerous feat as some volunteers were killed, cars were shot into pieces, and even Anton with his partner survived several mortar attack. <coughs> Було страшно, дуже страшно. Мінометний обстріл це завжди страшно, і ти просто лежиш і просто чекаєш, це по тебе чи ще не по тебе. Despite how scary it all was, these guys continued to take people out of the city. And not only people, but cats also. Привіт. О, тіпусь. Чергове замінили колосо. Вже задовбався. When I asked Anton what moved him to do it all, his answer was very simple. Коли відчуваєш, що ти мусиш щось робити, то ти просто мусиш це робити, бо а хто? I think this answer explains a lot. It explains why all these people decided to stay and help instead of living and hiding. They all took up different roles and all these roles are incredibly important. During the war, we all fight in our own fronts, and sometimes peeling potatoes is as important as sewing bulletproof vests. All these volunteers do what they do not because someone asked them to. They do it simply because they cannot live in any other way. Because this is our country, and right now, it needs help. It really needs help, guys, and everybody can be a volunteer today. First, you can donate money. I'm running a fundraiser to support Ukrainian army, so if you want to contribute, all information below. This is Sergei Pritula's fund. Uh, you saw his job, he is really supporting our troops. I already donated and I'm gonna donate more. So please join. You can help to save lives and it takes just one minute. Ukraine now needs heavy weapons to defend and just one air defense system could potentially save like hundreds of lives in many cities in Ukraine which are now suffering from Russian airstrikes. If you are in US, just follow this website and ask your elected officials to stop the next death. If you're outside US, make tweet or use any social media to create the post with hashtag Arm Ukraine now. Every voice matters and it's really important. Thank you so much for participation and I see you in the next video.